Hello everyone! Uh, after that uh, monstrosity of a game in my previous video, that immense struggle between Tigran Petrosan and Paul Karras, uh, I suggest we relax with a nice fun game. Uh, other than being nice and fun, this game is also one of the craziest, most poisonous games I've ever seen. Uh, it was played in 1981 between Jonathan David Tisdall and Graham Lee. Uh, Jonathan David Tisdall was an American citizen, who later became an Irish citizen, who later became a Norwegian citizen. Uh, his father was Irish and his mother was uh, Japanese, so in 1981 he received his international master title, so I believe he was an international master already when this game was played, uh, and 12 years later in 1993 he received his grandmaster title. But other uh, from becoming a chess grandmaster, he was also a shogi player. He studied shogi, uh, probably due to his mother being Japanese, but uh, I don't know, it might be completely non-related. Uh, and he's playing against uh, Fide Master Graham Lee. Yeah, some of you might remember Graham Lee from uh, that uh, Darren Brown's simultaneous exhibition where Darren Brown, I believe he's called Darren Brown, uh, that illusionist or something. Uh, he invited nine chess players and uh, he will defeat them. I mean, at the end of the simultaneous exhibition, the result will be in his favor. Uh, and, you know, the strength of the players varied from Fide Masters to uh, Grand Masters. Uh, which isn't the first time something like this happened. Uh, a similar offer was also given to Lasker and Capablanca. Some millionaire uh, offered them like a million dollars or something uh, to play a match against both of them simultaneously and if the result is in their favor uh, they will win the money. Uh, but not, the match never happened as well, both Capablanca and Lasker figured out what was going on. Uh, it's only a story, it might not be a true story, but I read it. Uh, so, uh, like I said, uh, Jonathan David Tisdall versus Graham Lee, and I will put a link in the description to this video of Darren Brown where he plays against 9 players, uh, you can check it out, it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, and when Jonathan was younger they called him uh, Tis the Wiz, uh, which after seeing this game I'm, I'm sure, sure you'll understand why. Uh, so Jonathan has the white pieces and he plays d4. Uh, we have e6, the Horowitz defense. Uh, e4 and c5, knight to f3 with transposed into the Sicilian, c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and knight to f6, uh, knight to c3, and the bishop to b4, uh, the so-called pin variation, and I really enjoy playing this with white, uh, as uh, I was supposed to play uh, against my brother-in-law in a tournament, it was a classical game, and uh, I prepared this idea e5, which also happens in the game. Uh, Graham Lee uh, in this position played knight to e4. Uh, when I played against my brother-in-law, uh, he played knight to d5. Uh, on what I played queen to g4, uh, with ideas of queen captures on g7 and allowing this uh, knight captures on c3. Uh, but this is a well-known uh, tricky variation for black. Black has to be extremely careful of what he does here, so my brother-in-law didn't go for this. He responded with g6, and after queen to g3, uh, we simply continue to play a normal game. Uh, but in this game that, uh, like I said, is one of the craziest, most poisonous games, uh, after e5, we have knight to e4. And now uh, Jonathan plays queen to g4. Uh, the difference is, uh, from that position in my own game, uh, the knight is on e4. And now uh, the queen is also threatening to capture the knight as well as the g7 pawn. Uh, so black is pretty much in this variation force to capture the knight. So we have knight captures on c3, and now white plays queen to g7, uh, uh, threatening to grab the rook with check. And unfortunately for black, there are no good discoveries here. If you play something like knight to e4 with check, simply c3, uh, the bishop is attacked, the rook is attacked, uh, this is beautiful for white. So after queen to g7, rook to f8 was played, uh, and here not capturing the knight of course, but a3. It's a standard theme in this opening. Uh, black responds with knight to b5 uh, with a discovered check from the bishop, uh, a captures on b4 and knight captures on d4. And uh, uh, black is up a piece here, but uh, this is uh, no compensation for the for the dark square weaknesses uh, black now has. After this bishop comes to g5, uh, all the dark squares around black king will be owned by white. Uh, bishop to d3, uh, we have queen to b6 and uh, bishop to g5 now, completely owning those dark squares. Uh, knight to f5 with a tempo on the queen, uh, bishop captures on f5, e captures on f5, uh, and here uh, Jonathan plays uh, the beautiful queenside castle uh, with a lot of poison to the position. 
uh, Graham Lee decides uh, he wants to go for queen to g6. Uh, he's, he thinks, uh, okay, I'm offering a trade of queens. Uh, if the queen moves, uh, well, the queen can't really move. Wherever the queen moves, <clears throat> I'm just going to exchange queens and I'll be up a piece. Uh, good game for me. Uh, but unfortunately for him, uh, here comes the poison, e6. Uh, what's the idea behind e6? Well, uh, if you capture the queen with queen captures on g7, uh, this loses to a terrible set of events after e captures on d7 with check. Uh, knight captures and now rook to e1 with check. Uh, you can't block check with the knight because rook to d8 is checkmate as the bishop is slicing all the way to d8. Uh, and if you block with the queen, of course, uh, this is the only thing you can do, but you simply capture the queen and after knight captures on e5, uh, again, rook to d8 uh, with a beautiful checkmate, uh, the, the opera house checkmate, uh, if you will. Uh, so after e6, uh, d5 was played, and here we have rook captures on d5, again, uh, threatening rook to d8 with checkmate. Uh, knight to c6 now, to guard uh, the d8 square, but here uh, e captures on f7 with check would be perfectly fine for white to, to win this game and uh, black doesn't really have anything here uh, after the pawn is captured rook to e1 and it's game over. Uh, but as white played such a beautiful game he decides to continue uh, with the beauty. e7 now, uh, again offering, uh, offering his queen. Uh, capturing the queen, of course, uh, fails terribly. If the queen is captured, then rook to e8, rook to d8 with check. Uh, knight captures and pawn captures with a rook or the queen doesn't matter again with the exact same checkmate. Uh, so after e7, black played knight captures on e7, and it finally seems that he managed to defend his position. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, that's not really so. Rook to d8 now check, sacrificing the rook. Uh, temporarily, king has to capture, king captures rook, queen captures rook on f8, uh, king to c7, now queen captures uh, knight on e7 with check, uh, bishop to d7, and now bishop to f4, uh, leaving the black king with two choices, king b6 or king to c8, it doesn't really matter, if king to b6, queen to c5 check, king a6, queen to a5, this is checkmate, uh, and after bishop to f4 check, uh, if king to sorry, if king comes to c8, then uh, queen to f8 check now. Uh, the bishop is blocking the king's path to c7. Uh, light square bishop has to block, and queen captures on e8. Uh, again, this is checkmate. Uh, but none of this uh, happened after rook to d8 with check. Uh, Graham Lee resigned the game, as the following continuation is pretty straightforward. So yeah. Uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it, and uh, it's uh, you know after after a game like uh, Petrosian versus Karras in my previous video, a game like this is I believe always welcome. Uh, like I said, I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.